we're going to take a bit of a gear change because um, this to- this topic, this subject is is never really easy to talk about. Um, but there is no avoiding it at all. It's it's everywhere this morning, um, and in my opinion, it, it should be. Um, you may have seen it perhaps on social media. That may be where you got your information from yesterday. Maybe you haven't. Um, we have to be very careful with this. It will be really open with you and, and upfront. Um, there are so many legalities surrounding these kind of situations um, that we have to be very very careful with who we name and, and what we say um, but what we can tell you um, are the situations that are arising at the moment perhaps um, what the clubs have said and also um, what's been said by Manchester Police so um, this came up yesterday um, Mason Greenwood um, is the player that is in the forefront of this situation at the moment um, he hasn't commented on some allegations that have come up um, but the allegations that have come up and are surrounding at the moment are subject of um, abusive relationships, domestic abuse, um, rape as well. Um, we will read out exactly what Manchester police have said and we'll also read out what Manchester United have said too so we can tell you exactly how this situation is developing at the moment. Um, but what it has done now, and I think there will be a lot of people that are listening at the moment that may have seen these allegations yesterday and feel particularly scared about it um, and perhaps affected by it quite deeply. Um, and that's what we wanted to talk to you about this morning. Here's a statement that Greater Manchester Police have put out. This was yesterday at 4.50pm. And they've said that Greater Manchester Police were made aware earlier today of online social media images and videos posted by a woman reporting of incidents of physical violence and investigating was launched and following inquiries we can confirm a man in his 20s has since been arrested on suspicion of rape and assault um, so that's what they have said Manchester United have also come out and released their own statement they've actually released two statements now um, the first one was actually when it happened and when it was originally reported and they were saying that we are aware of this um, but they didn't want to comment too much on it um, because it was an active case and because they wanted to get all of the facts. Um, since then Mason Greenwood has actually been uh, suspended so he will not be coming into training, he will not be taking part uh, in matches either. Um, so those are the two separate ways that uh, Manchester Police are, are dealing with it and the club as well. Um, but if you are listening and, and it has affected you because I'll be honest i I, I saw what was being circulated on social media yesterday. I listened to it. I watched it. Um, I felt really, um, oh, uh, my initial reaction was just gut-wrenching sickness. I, I couldn't, oh, it was just awful. It was uh, hor- horrible for that girl who also, by the way, we aren't naming her either because when this case becomes active, um, she has a right to anonymity, which may sound ridiculous to you if you are listening this morning because her name was everywhere yesterday um, and it widely circulated. But as soon as that case becomes active, um, her name will be removed from proceedings. So if, for example, you did tweet about her, um, you're being urged, urged to take that down. If you did name her, just take it down because now this is in in motion and um, that's the best way to deal with things. So it's, it is confusing and I get that. And it's also confusing the way that I think some people um, will be reporting on it. But you have to understand that those are the legalities surrounding the situation at the moment. Um, What I did want to speak to you about this morning, though, was um, I was having a little look at some research that I remember reading um, around the time of the Euros, which I found really staggering. And it was about domestic violence and and the connection with sport. Um, And this was in 2021. So there was a report that was put out um, by the National Centre of Domestic Violence in the UK. And Lancaster University actually followed it up and they did a study themselves as well. And they were saying that um, they focused on the English football team, actually. And they said when they're in action, cases of domestic violence goes up 38% if they lose. Um, And they focused around the Euros final and and the increased violence and abuse that happened then specifically. They said in general when England play it goes up by 26% as well and they were quite keen to highlight look this we're not saying that football equals violence and that it's football's fault necessarily but when you add alcohol and strong emotions into a situation where an individual feels motivated to do something like that anyway um, it's, the whole situation is exacerbated so um, it really throws light I think on a on a situation that is so prevalent and if you're sat there affected by this by that one individual case that's happening yesterday, I think it's so important to know that this is happening so much more. Um, the Office for National Statistics, a crime survey for March 2019 to March 2020, found that 2.3 million adults had experienced domestic abuse and 1.6 million of them were women. 
it's not just men um it just happens a bit more not just women sorry it just happens a little bit more to women um by the statistics that we're being shown but if you are in that situation if you know somebody um if that is you um and you want some help there are so many places that you can actually get help this morning um refuge in particular actually it provides a specialist service to survivors of domestic abuse you can get confidential support you can call the national domestic abuse helpline as well that is 0808 2247 it's free and it's open 24 7 and if you're driving at the moment and you can't write this down or you're busy um we'll put this all out on social media as well so you can go and have a little look at it because like i say it might not be you specifically it might be someone that you know it might be someone that actually you suspect or anything like that and you can just call up and get a little bit of help um monday to friday 3 till 10 p.m as well and um, you can speak online to them you can contact them in any form at any time um, you can go to their twitter page have a little look at their pinned tweet they've got something up there so you can quite easily go and have a little look at it um, but there's also an article as well that i wanted to talk to you about samuel uh, martin samuel's written this in the mail this morning um, and it discusses the connection i suppose between wanting to protect sports stars and and some domestic abuse cases that we know about that have been out in the public perhaps we need to have a hard conversation about something like that as well um once the facts in this specific case are more established um we can go into more detail and trust me i would love to speak to you about this all morning I, I, I would love to say exactly how everyone is feeling in the office this morning because I think it's affected everybody um, my friends that I've spoken to I saw the general swell of emotion online as well and then there was a big part of me that felt quite heartened by the reaction because it was so immediate that people were going this is absolutely disgusting but you know that there are some sections in sporting life where they will want to protect the idol because idolized sports fans are or sorry sports stars are, are put on such a pedestal that i've seen a little bit of it and i'll say it's, it's a small part but people wanting to to jump to the defense of some of these people um martin samuel highlights this really well he says that um sport creates heroes um, and heroes as well can be convicted of crimes. Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather, um, legends of boxing, but both have histories of violence against women. Um, and he says, you know, this is a real watershed moment for the game. It's a turning point, really, for the game. I was thinking about this as well. The way that Manchester United deal with this will be so important, not just to the individual case, but anything that happens from now on with sport connected to sports stars connected to domestic abuse domestic violence anything like that um it is such a key moment it's not just manchester united manchester city also have a case as well there are cases in other sports it's not just football but i think it's really key to highlight how this is dealt with moving forward um i know in the nfl as well they have a a very strange ruling it's it's the first it's almost like you've got two strikes in the nfl um if you are found to be um, a domestic abuser you're banned for a number of games but then it's only the second time really that a stronger um, punishment it kicks into gear which I find bizarre I don't I don't understand how you can almost have a two strike rule and then you're out it's a one strike rule it, it's domestic abuse nobody should be subjected to it and nobody should be able to get away from it either if this is something that you're involved with um, you need to feel the full force of the law but also that law needs to be backed up by the company that you work for first and foremost I mean, you can't I, I just don't I can't get my head around it so I agree with what Martin Samuel saying I think it is a watershed moment for the game <coughs> as well and um, and yeah I'm, I'm massively heartened by the reaction of most people online I wanted to read you something as well Women's Aid Charity they've said we at Women's Aid share the shock and distress of everybody um, because yesterday I think was a, a real moment Ali um, when it came up and there was text actually that that I had earlier on that I wanted to read out to you um, because this one actually really, really spoke to me. I suddenly thought about this. Um, he didn't leave a name as a dad and he was saying that um, his son, his young son, woke them up playing the audio this morning that was released yesterday on social media. So I don't know how old his son is, but I know you have five boys and, and I wondered, there are people listening now that may be with their children that that have seen it as well and that is... If you've seen what we are talking about, harrowing, and it's real. Um, and I wondered how it affected you guys, Ali. Well, I'll tell you how real it is. Um, we were out for a bite to eat last night, my two youngest, just before we came down. Uh, and we are, and actually leaned over and said to my dad, <clears throat> he'd heard a bit of audio himself on his phone. 
and, and <clears throat> you're aware as a parent I, I'm aware although I'm probably like a lot of parents you think you've got it covered when they go upstairs to their rooms and they go on their Wi-Fi and they go on their games and all whatever it is they do you think you try to be careful and monitor it but I actually got a real shock myself last night that he was looking at me and he'd heard this bit of audio and I could see he I was shocked at him him being shocked because he'd clearly been shocked at what he'd heard right and I thought to myself wow man this clearly isn't the first time that this has happened because the, the kids out there are going on and they're getting into you know an environment that a lot of the parents, myself included, don't appreciate and understand, and and their their minds have been open to to things effectively. I think that that it shouldn't be, and it's a concern. As I say, they go up and they t- they talk to each other. On, I mean, it's amazing now. You go in and watch them in the room, and they're talking to their pals all over the country, and they're watching things and they're reading things, and they're getting told things, and it's a little bit scary. And I just feel it's a time now. For parents, first and foremost, and schools and other levels of authority, to try and sit down and educate the kids moving forward, because you think the, you know, you, you, I, I myself, I keep saying myself, I, I, I'm walking about not blinkered. However, last night really surprised me and shocked me. I did not expect my second youngest son to hit me with that information and what he's heard, and it, it did it really surprise and shock me. Yeah, um, the access that they have and the lack of control as a parent. I'm not a parent, so I can't imagine it. Um, but I, I can see how much access we can have as adults, let alone children, to to images, to anything online these yeah. days. It's the the lack of control would would terrify me completely. Um, just to reiterate, of course, um, we have to go about this the right way. Um, we are subject to certain rules. Um, legal situations like this are quite difficult to speak about. Um, these are allegations. They are being investigated investigated by Greater Manchester Police. Mason Greenwood is yet to comment on the situation. Um, But the most important thing I think that we can talk about this morning um, is not necessarily that angle, but more what you can do if you need help. And also what you can do if you're listening and you know anybody that might need help as well. Perhaps, and and this again is, is quite uncomfortable as well, but perhaps it's you that need help. Perhaps it's you that are sitting in a situation where you might not have control of what you were doing and you want to speak to somebody about it and try and change what you are going through or what you are putting somebody else through. 0808 2000 247. It's free. It's open 24 7. You can go to Refuge's Twitter page as well, R E F U G E. You can just put that in a, any social media um, search. You can put it in a normal search engine as well. Um, there is help, there is advice. It's free, it's confidential anything that you're going through this morning or perhaps you want just some help to like Ali was saying there to speak to your kids that have seen this because it is harrowing it's not normal it shouldn't be accepted um, and there's ways that you can get help and advice and ways that you can find out how to speak more about it Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods Monday to Wednesday morning 6 till 10 on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker Talk Sport